Well, hi there. Um, welcome. Today, I'm just trying to get a nice pen here. What do you think of that one? Not bad. It's very thick. Anyway, what um, what some people have been wondering is this symbol, this symbol that we often see in math, especially when we're talking about circles, and uh, we call this symbol pi. All right. Um, it's not spelt with the E on the end, it's just PI. And a lot of you already know that PI equals a special number which we often round off and we call it 3.14. Um, there's a lot of people that are saying, well, how, how did they come up with this symbol? What, why is it 3.14? So let's quickly talk about that. Um, my knowledge of history is not very extensive, but from what I understand, there was a person, and I'm not sure who that person is, but that person um, started to do some, um, I'm guessing they were Greek, because this symbol pi is, you know, from, looks like it's from the Greek alphabet. But they basically, this person started looking at circles, and all different sizes of circles. So there would be small circles and big circles. Let's start with a smaller circle. And uh, I, I'm not going to measure it, but I'm just going to uh, pick a color. Whoops. I'll keep the circle yellow. Um, and we'll pick a pen. We'll pick a red pen. Here's the center of the circle. And as you may know, this is called the diameter of a circle. When you go all the way across in a straight line through the center of the circle, and the person measured the circle, and they measured it, let's say they measured the circle to be three meters, okay? Three meters long. Now they may not have <laughs> used meters in those, time, in those times, but let's say it was three meters. And what that person did is he or she, I'm guessing it was a he in this case, um, measured the distance around the circle, okay? And the way to do that without any special tools is just to take a string, wrap it around the circle, and lay out the string in a line and then measure it. And what that person realized is that when the diameter was 3, the distance around the circle, which we call the circumference, well, was about 9.42. Okay? 9.42 meters in this case. So I'll write a little chart over here just to show you. When the diameter when the diameter was 3, the circumference, I'll call that C, was 9.42. Okay? And then, uh, let's say they, they did another measurement. They made a larger circle. So let's, uh, let's erase that. And let's make the circle bigger. Okay? So they made the circle bigger. This time the circle was... Um, the diameter was 5, so, so there's the diameter. And the person who did this, so the diameter was 5, discovered that the circumference of the circle, the distance around the circle in this case, was about 15.7. Okay? So measured the, measured the circumference using a string or a rope, and it was 15.7. And let's just do one more. Um, I'm going to erase this 5 here, erase this line, that diameter. Let's make the circle a little bit bigger. And this will be our last circle, because we're going to try to make this video pretty quick. So this person uh, calculated the, the diameter to be, I don't know, we'll say, we'll just go up by 2's here, so this will be 7. And then the distance around the circle, the circumference, was... So when the diameter was 7, the circumference was about 22. We're just kind of rounding that one off. So here are some numbers that this person discovered. And all of that was fine and dandy, and there was not much else to think about, except then there was suddenly a pattern that was being noticed. This person said, hey, I see a pattern here. And I don't know if you can see the pattern already, but if you look at all these numbers, if you take... If you take 9.42, and if you divide that by 3, 
So if you take the circumference and if you divide it by the diameter, what do you get? Well, just take a calculator, and I'm going to just pull up this calculator here. I'll pull it off to the side. If I go 9.42, if I divide that by th uh, 3, it turns out to be 3.14. Whoa! Okay, so we know that that's an important number, but this person did not know it at the time. So this person checked it out and said, well, let's try the 15.7 the and the 5. Let's try that out. So 15.7 divided by 5. Interesting. 15.7 divided by 5. That's curious. It gave us this number 3.14. And let's see if this happens too with the, 20, the circumference of 22 and the, rate, the diameter was 7. What would the number be? 22 divided by 7. Look at that. It's 3.14 again. And no matter how big or small this circle got, this person was able to take the diameter and take the circumference, take the circumference, divide by the diameter. It always seemed to be 3.14. And because that number kept appearing, they decided this is a number that's a constant number and because it's so special instead of writing 3.14 all the time let's just put a symbol let's call it pi and maybe they were from Greece and maybe they looked over and saw some Greek architecture and maybe they saw that that pi symbol just worked really well maybe they liked that pi symbol I don't know so all of you should know how to draw pi what I'm doing now is just pulling up something called GeoGebra and I just want to show you, it's kind of a cool little animation here. What's going to happen is we can choose the diameter of this circle. See that? I'm changing the diameter of the circle. I'll put it at, actually let's choose one of the numbers we had on the other page. Let's go with 3. See we started at 3. We know that the circumference should be about 9.42. What we're going to do, oh my goodness, when I went back a page and then went to this page, it's loading again. Here we go. Let's see if it remembered the 3 that I just chose. Okay, 2.86. I want it at 3. There. Now what we're going to do, see this word here? Roll the circle. How cool is that? We're going to unroll the circle now. Here we go. Do you notice the red is like the string that was going around the circle? We're rolling it out. And over here is the distance that we're going. We're almost done. Do you notice the distance of the diameter of 3 on the circumference is 9.42? So the circumference is 9.42. That's pretty cool. And if we were to take this circle and let's zoom out a little bit, the next one was 5. And let's see, let's roll it out a little quicker this time so we don't bore you. <laughs> 15.71. I'm hoping that kind of matches what we had before. And let's go, let's go for a diameter of 7, just to see if we get something close to 22. Whoops. It's a little bit tough. So close. There. Oh boy, I had it. Let's just go with this because I can't seem to get it right on there. and We don't want to lose your viewing here. We want to keep you here. Okay, see how it's very close to 22? So this little animation will roll out the circumference for us so that we can see what it is. And yeah, because this was so... it was very exciting for this person. He's he's like, or she's like, I'm sure, I guess it was a he, but um, let's call this thing pi. It keeps coming up as 3.14 and from there all kinds of things were discovered. They came up with the famous formula for the circumference of a circle. That famous formula and let's write it down. Oh dear. The famous formula, where is it? Pi. If you take, sorry, I'm going to erase all this. All right. 
we know that if you take the circumference and if you divide it by the diameter, you will always get this thing called pi. Okay? And in algebra, we know that we can move these things around so that if we wanted to rearrange this, we could get rid of this diameter on the bottom here. It's something, div it's c divided by d. To get rid of it, we can multiply both sides by d, or the diameter, so that we end up getting pi times the diameter. So the circumference is equal to pi, or 3.14, times the diameter, and that's the formula you often see in textbooks now, to this day. Okay? So if you know the diameter of a circle, all you do is times it by 3.14, and you will know the circumference. And likewise, if you know, if you know the circumference of a circle, you can rearrange this formula so that all you have to do is take, if you know the circumference and if you divide by pi, that will automatically get you to the diameter. Now I'm not sure if that information is what you were looking for. You just wanted to know how did this thing get discovered. So I apologize if I went over. Um, but for now, hopefully that is enough information for you. Um, if you want to watch another useful video on, on area and circumference of circles, then I would recommend watching that video now. Okay, have a great day everyone.